All right, this next part is going to be all about the zombies. So if we start our game, you're going to notice right away our zombie spawner is going to be over here. And they are probably going to be the default mannequin meshes. So we're going to want to change them out to our own zombies. So when you start the game, they spawn in and this is how they look. They already do a fantastic job of the giving system, which is this. When you shoot them, they their heads pop off and their arms. This is fantastic. This is almost worth the price of the template to me. So that looks great. But we're going to switch these guys out for our own zombies. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to the store. If you have one that you want to use from there. Or maybe you made it yourself and you just import that. But I'm going to be using one from the marketplace. I'm going to use this one here. It's pretty standard. Uh... I picked it up on sale I think one time. It's just a, a standard stylized one. Add to project. Go to my project that we're working out of and add that in. And it may have to download but it's pretty small. It's pretty compact. I would probably if I was doing a commercial release use something like Yarwaz because he's incredible at his zombie stuff. That would be like these ones. I have this whole pack that I picked up recently. Yarawai Interactive. These are fantastic zombies. They do all kinds of face movements. He just has, I think he still has a sale on for the next 10 days where you can get an entire package of just an insane amount of zombie stuff. It's like a $1,400 pack. Well worth it if you guys are doing a zombie game and it's the next 10 days after January 3rd. You should probably pick it up. Uh, so let's see. Let's get back to our our zombie game here and we added in our zombie so to get started we go into our zombie folder go to our mesh same as the character we find the one that's pink or the full body one I'm assuming it's this one I'm gonna do the same thing and delete the skeleton just so it stops with any confusion type in UE4 make sure it is the HGT characters folder select that replace the reference OK save save all it may have to add additional bones when we change it out, that's fine. We'll do that in a second. So then we go back to our content folder, our HGT folder. And I'm going to be making a new zombie as my own. So I'm going to go to AI Zombie. I'm going to create a new folder called Child Zombies. This is where I'm going to put all my new zombies that I make at. So. When I go to base zombie, I'm going to right click on that, click on create child blueprint class, and I'm going to call this one zombie underscore 01. All right. Then I'm going to open I'm going to drag this into the child zombies folder just to keep everything tidy. I'm going to open him up. And then right away I'm going to go to the mesh and I'm going to I think it's called SK zombie it's right here and I'm gonna switch that out it probably has to compile it may need those bones I talked about that's okay yes it does I gotta save all on those and it'll save all the animations compile again and save sometimes you have to be careful with assigning a bunch of different meshes into the skeleton with extra bones because it can mess up your project. I know these ones work okay together because they're from the same artist. But if you start mix matching things in, you may run into issues. But for this, I know I'm okay. So the first thing I want to do, this guy's kind of big for what it is. I'm going to check it in the in the game itself. So I'm going to go to HGT Maps Arena 1. And what I'm going to do is browse to this zombie, and I'm going to drag him in, and he's going to be huge. He doesn't look right at all, and we're going to fix that. So you'll see he walks through the floor, and he's, yeah, I guess he could be big, but he's walking through the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can either do one or two things. I can make him smaller and put him inside of this capsule, or I can make the capsule bigger to match this zombie. I think what I'll do is I'll make him smaller. So I'm going to select my mesh. I'm going to push R. And that 
brings up my little tool here to resize. And if I select the white portion of the cube, I can drag him down to size. Now he's kind of hard to get to size with these selected because these kind of do it in increments. So I'm going to turn these off for now. You can also select your tool here for scaling. Or you can push R. And I'm going to scale him down and move him up. I push W to change to my translate object. Then I can move him up with this blue arrow. And I'm going to want to make sure his feet are exactly on the bottom of this capsule. Otherwise he's going to be under the floor. So I'll get it as close as I can. That looks okay for what we're doing. Compile and save. And I'm going to go back into my game. And he's looking better. I'm just going to do a quick play test and see how he looks. He looks okay. He's walking on the floor. Shoot him and he plays just perfectly. That looks great. So now what I'm going to want to do, I don't want him in my scene because he's not part of the spawners, so I delete him out. Just click on him and delete. Then I come over to the zombie spawner right here. And by default this is going to spawn the other zombies, which is these ones. And that's not what we want. We want this to spawn our new zombies. So inside the scene, if I select this zombie spawner right here, you'll see zom zombie spawn zone. We can change the other ones out in a bit, but for now I'm just going to do this one. Then down here you'll see the type of enemy to spawn. I'm going to drop this down. And right here where it says base zombie, I made a child zombie, I think. Child zombie. Or zombie 01. I think it was a zombie 01. Right here. That's my new class, which we made inside of our, our child zombies folder right here. You can also go into your child zombie folder, highlight it, then push this little arrow and it'll put it here too. Save all. And then if I click play, they should spawn in as the new zombies. Let's just give it a second. Da, da, da. And there they are. So that's our new zombies. And they're coming over, they're attacking us. Now the thing is, I want to have different animations for my zombies. So I'm going to start switching those out as well because I want them to actually walk like zombies and attack like zombies. So let's get started with that. The first thing I want to do is there's a great pack on the marketplace that you guys can use. And that is Zombie Anims, I think it's called. Zombie Anims? Zombie Animations, this one here. It's really good if you have it. There's also a couple of free ones that were out. They're pretty good too, but I think this one has been the best that I've used. So I click Add to Projects, Zombie Survival Template Tutorial, add that on, and I'll just open that up so you guys can see which one I'm using. I'm going to be using this one. There's a lot of stuff in here you're probably not going to use right away, but I'll show you how to use it later on, where zombies can grab you and stuff. But for now, we're just going to use the walking animations and the attacks. So that's probably added in. So I go back to my content folder, Zombie Anims. And then in here, I haven't used this in a little while, so I'm going to find the skeleton. The skeleton is inside of this zombie anims demo mannequin character mesh. So I'm going to delete the skeleton right out of here. <clears throat> and I'm going to select the UE4. Just make sure it's the HGT folder. Replace the reference. Click OK. Save it save all and then all these animations are now going to be paired to everything inside the skeleton that we're working with which is the HGT so all of our player characters and all of our zombies that we have right now which should be like the one I just made will work with all these animations so the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to go to my new zombie HGT AI zombie if I work with the base zombie it does everything so if I do anything with this base zombie it changes every zombie that's a based off of this one 
So I'm just going to work with my new zombie. So just keep in mind that everything I do with the animation blueprint right here for the zombies, it's going to do it with all the zombies. So Unless I make a new one, which we're going to do in a bit. So just, we'll work with that. First thing I'm going to do though, is I'm going to change his walking, which is inside the animation blueprint. So that's right here. So I clicked the little magnifying glass for zombie anim BP. Minimize this. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this. And I'm going to call it zombie 01 underscore anim BP. You don't have to do this, but I like to keep mine separate so I can give them variation later on. So zombie 01 anim BP, we'll open that up. And in here we're going to click on anim graph. And then there's a default state machine right up here. We're going to double click that. Then you'll see idle run. We'll double click that. Then you'll see down here you'll see zombie idle run BS, which is blend space. I'm going to open that up, or I'm going to double click that. And then I'm going to browse to where this is, which is right here. And what I like to do, you don't have to do this, you can work with just this one. I like to duplicate mine. You can do, you don't have to. So I'm going to call mine zombie 01 underscore walk run or idle run BS. I'm going to call, actually I'm going to make sure it says idle run to keep it the same. So zombie 01 idle run. Idle run. I'm going to open that up. Remember, you can do the same with just the normal one, but I like to do it this way. And then you'll see a little drag bar here. This is when the zombie is idle. This is when he's walking. And this is when he's running. So from my pack, I like to go back to the zombie anims, animation sequence. And in here, there's a zombie idle. And these should all be accessible now in here. So if I type in zombie idle, they're not. Why are they not? Because the skeleton didn't update. All right, so if I select all these, I'm just going to open all these one by one and it should give make them accessible. Mostly just these three, I guess, would be the main ones. But if I just double click them all one by one, I'm pretty sure that'll work. So I gotta reopen my blend space again. And I made a zombie 01 blend space. All right, so now they should be all there. Zombie idle 01, 02. I'm gonna use the zombie idle 01. So the, I'm gonna drag that over right to here where the idle animation is and drop it. And now he's going to idle like this, which is perfect. I'm going to type in zombie walk. It's probably going to be the same. I'm going to have to open those as well. So I go back to my zombie animations, animation sequence, zombie walk. And I'm just going to pick one here. Zombie walk forward something. Zombie walk forward... This one here, maybe. Yeah, that looks okay. So I'm gonna have to open my blend space again. You can work within this one, maybe that's what you're doing, but I'm gonna keep it the same. So I made my zombie 01 idle run right here. So then I'm gonna find my walk, zombie walk forward 01 drag it and drop it here on top of that one so now when he's walking he looks like this and then I'm gonna find a run animation inside that folder animation sequence zombie run uh, forward right run forward 
That looks a little silly, but we may use it. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll use this one. Zombie Run Forward 01. Open my blend space again. I should have probably just stuck with the original, but I like to do things this way. So I gotta keep opening it back up. This is the last time though. Zombie Run. Zombie Run Forward 02. Drag that where the run is, which is right here. And then I can drag this and see that when he runs, he does this. When he walks, he does this. And when he's idle, he does this. Click Save. And because I switched my blend space out for a new one, that means that I have to switch this out. If you just worked on this one, you're good to go. You already are finished. But I made a new blend space, so I'm going to drag that in. Mine Zombie 01. I'm going to hold Control and switch this out like this. Hold Control and drag that out there. And I can just delete the original. And then I click Compile and Save. And now I'm done with changing his walking and running. Then I'm going to have to assign this because I changed the animation blueprint out. You probably don't have to do this if you didn't duplicate anything. So I click Browse, go back into my Zombie 01 character, and then where it says Animation Zombie BP, I just click on the arrow here and switch it to my new animation blueprint that I made. So now when the zombie starts, he is going to be walking with the new animations. So we'll just give that a second. And when they spawn in, they're idling the way we want them to. They're coming after me. And they're attack animations. I want to change that up. So I'm going to switch the attack animations. So to do that, I'm going to find an animation first that I want to work with. So my zombie animations, animation sequence, uh, zombie attack, and zombie attack 01. I think these are a root motion, so what you have to do, if you have this specific pack and you see at the very end of the animation, it does a little skip backwards and skips. What you want to do is on the side here under the details, you scroll down you'll see enable root motion. Click on that. And then click save and that'll smoothen this out. So now with my new attack animation that I want, I'm going to click on browse. And then with that attack animation, I'm going to right click on it, create in a montage. And then I'm going to open that up. And then in here, I'm going to find where the, zo where the zombie actually attacks the player. So it would be right about here. So I stop it here. Then down here, I want to right click until I see where it says add notify. And I'm going to go to Add Notify State. And then there's a Zombie Attack Notify. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to drag this out. So right to the end of the attack. So right about there, I guess. So that's... He's attacking the player, and then the attack is over. So I click Save. Then inside my zombie. So my, my zombie that we made, our blueprint for it which is inside the child folder, if you don't have it still open. So we made zombie 01. Click on the zombie self here. And then down here you will see the attack anim array. Click on the little arrow, and you'll see there's a zombie attack montage here. We just made a new one. So we have zombie attack 01 montage. I'm gonna click on compile and save. And that's the new attack that we just made, right here. So we save that. And now when the zombie attacks us, I'm just going to drag one into the scene instead of waiting. So now we should have a new animation. When he tries to attack us, it does not because I missed a step and that's good. So now I can show you what we did wrong. So inside the montage, there's a thing called default group or slot default slot. 
what you do is you want to click on slot, the slot name, and set that to upper body, and then click save. What that does is it means the zombie can still walk, but his upper body will play the animation of him attacking from the waist up. So now, with that corrected, he'll now swing at us like this. And he can damage us, and he works perfectly fine. That's exactly what we want. And then you'll see our other zombies are starting to spawn. They'll do the same thing. They'll attack us. And, and if you want to take it an extra step further, I'll show you why I made an extra animation blueprint here to give it some variation. So what I do is inside my zombie, so I'll go back to my zombie I made, child zombies, in the mesh, and in the animation class here. Now I made a new one, you, you may have kept the original, but I'm going to make another one. I'm going to duplicate it again, and I'm going to call it Zombie 02, Anim BP. I will open that up. And then you will see, if I go to the animation graph, back into idle run, in here, this is our idle run, I also duplicated this. If I duplicate that again, and I make zombie 02, idle run, blend space, and I save that. I can give this some variation now by changing the zombie idle to say this. I'll put the idle as this. I'll make zombie walk forward 01. Maybe, well, that's the same one, so I'm going to have to get a different one. So our zombie animation walking. Uh, walk forward 02. Do we have an 02? I think this is one here. Just taking a second. Yeah, so this is a different one. So then I'll open my blend space for the zombie 02. I'll change the walking animation as well. And then I'll save that. Go back to my animation blueprint for the 02. I can drag in the O2 blend space, drag that in. You don't have to do this, this is a bit advanced stuff, but it gives some nice variation, you'll see what I mean. Delete that out, compile and save. Then I go back to my zombie one, browse to him, and if I duplicate him, I think I can duplicate him. Zombie 02, open this guy up, click on mesh, and I have Zombie 02 animation blueprint right here. He's going to look different already. Then I go back into my game, I select my zombie spawner, and I add a little plus sign here to the type of enemies. I type in Zombie 02, and now I should have another zombie movement so when they spawn I'll have two types of zombies or the same type of zombie but two different movement variations so the zombies won't look the same when they're walking or they shouldn't so we'll wait a second we got a couple of those and a couple of these so these guys are walking like that those guys are walking like that so yeah we got some variation here which is great so some are walking with their hands down, and some are walking with their hands out. And that's pretty much it for the zombie animations. And we'll look at a little bit of weapon stuff coming up next.